Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about what position you would have in the Wings of Fire universe. Are you the king or queen of your tribe, making all the decisions, or would you rather be a doctor during war times, protecting your fellow dragons? It's time to take a step back from reality and imagine if you were part of the Wings of Fire world, and what your role should be in it. You'd be surprised at hearing all the different things you could do with your life, and if you're fit for them or not. But before we begin, a huge shout out to my patrons. Draglover95, Three Moon, Slightest Wild, Bombier, and Fizz. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Do you think you'd want to be the queen of your tribe? Some of you might be like, oh yeah, bring on the power. But others may be worried about the responsibility. If you think you would just want to be the ruler of your tribe, then you have to know exactly what the queen does. No, she isn't just shouting orders and getting everything she wants. There's actual work that has to be put into being a queen, especially a good one. As ruler, you have full control over the economic, military, and social aspects of the kingdom. So basically, you're the one in charge of your tribe's money, defenses, and morale, as well as a plethora of other things. Your word is what goes, so be wise. Your tribe is going to listen to your commands, and a lot of dragons will look up to you. But a lot may not even like you, which you'll have to accept. Learn to manage all your tasks, and still find fun in being a dragon and enjoying the pleasures of life. When you first become queen, it's your duty to visit all the other kingdoms and have a meeting with their rulers, too. You have a lot of choices up ahead to so be smart, practical, and honest. It's going to pay off. Want to take the significantly easier route of being a king? Unlike most of real life history, in Wings of Fire, the women are in charge of making the biggest decisions. But for the king, the husband of, the, the husband of this ruler, his job is a little different. The king has a lot less power than the queen, but is typically as respected as she wishes for him to be. So you're pretty much going to be viewed as a general or advisor by most of the kingdom in many cases. Your power rests only in what the queen gives you, and you're not vital to the system. However, the king can still play an important role in advisory, guiding, and leading. You're just going to want to get lucky with who your queen is. The king can be banished, exiled, or even killed, and not much is usually going to change. But as a king or queen, what's your goal? Is it to expand the boundaries of your kingdom? To gain more wealth? To build better relationships with the other tribes and nurture your own? You'll have a lot of choices to make, but your end goal is one to consider. Whether you're a ruler or an old one, it takes a lot. If you still want to be part of the royal family but don't want a position as high as the king or queen, then being a princess or a prince is a good alternative. Princess is any dragon who is the daughter, granddaughter, sister, or niece of the queen, so you don't need to be a direct descendant to inherit the throne or have that position. Whether you choose to challenge your mother some days, up to you, but no matter what, you'll still have your own tasks and responsibilities to do. Believe it or not, dragons will look up to you as well. Many princesses sit in on diplomatic sessions and receive training from their mother. Princes, on the other hand, have a lot less of a weight on their shoulders, just like kings. They are still looked highly upon, being given some important roles at times, like things in the palace, advisory positions, working as treasurer, and being a lead in the kingdom's army. With how much the world of Wings of Fire has changed, the duties of those in power will be shifting ever so slightly as well. Though you may not do all these things, you'll still have your own jobs to manage. But hey, you can still enjoy the splendors of the palace and the pristineness of your position. Royalty must manage stress and uphold standards, willing to make a change for the better. Moving on from royalty, there are still a ton of different roles, many unique to specific kingdoms. So depending on what you want, consider what things may be exclusive or more important for just your tribe. We're going into some basic positions, but there are still tons and tons depending on who you are, where you are, and much more. The next role you could have is an assassin. Whether you're working in an uprising with the Nightwings, or hired and renowned in the Kingdom of Sand and beyond, there are plenty of opportunities for assassins. I would definitely not have it in me to kill any dragons, so this is not for me at all, even if for the right cause. You can decide if you're going to just be a hired assassin, or perhaps when working with the Queen or a spy in the army. It will require a lot of stealth, skill, and charm, and will certainly give you a lot of stress and worries. Spinning one is definitely not for everyone, but as an assassin, you can be a slippery and sneaky trickster in it for the riches, or someone who thinks they're doing it for the right cause. If you like fighting, though, perhaps being a general or soldier in your kingdom is perfect for you. You'll fight for the good of your tribe, protecting dragons, and winning great battles. 
So Valiance and Courage or more your style might be a whole lot more fun and a great challenge. Just be prepared for a lot of sadness, hardship, and endurance. Maybe you're a new recruit or perhaps a grizzled and tough elder with a lot of experience on your belt. One kind of dragon I don't think most people consider is a doctor or healer. Like Mayfly, you can assist other dragons by healing their wounds and working at their injuries. You have to have a kind heart, patience, and a lot of knowledge to be good at the job. But if you do take this up, you could save and help the lives of so many dragons. Maybe you primarily assist those just injured in war and rush to the battlefield, or if a clinic set up in a small village where dragons come to you from far and wide to receive your treatment. Another job I want to say might be a bit controversial because it involves humans. No, don't just immediately not consider this one. Imagine if you were a human in the modern world of WAF. You could just soar on your best scaly friend's back, going on great adventures throughout Pyria and Pintala. It would be so much fun to learn to speak dragon and trade, going on all kinds of quests. You could be a valuable asset to your team because as a person, you can get into a lot of small areas that dragons can't, and do a lot of fooling. There are so many job positions out there in Wings of Fire, and I can't name the pros, cons, and responsibilities of each one. Things like swordsmen, cooks, spies, fishermen, traders, advisors, scientists, teachers, librarians, and so, so much more. But I don't think I could do any of this justice if I didn't talk about the most important position, not only in Wings of Fire, but the world too. Townspeople. They're the most overlooked, yet the most vital. Without the civilians, the queens have no one to rule over. There's no one to join her army or to take care of. Townspeople are vital, and even simply just being a good mother, father, or friend does a lot for your tribe. You'd get a lot of time to just explore and appreciate the world around you. Because imagine waking up to the glorious sights of the rainforest or the vastness of the Kingdom of Sand the minute you wake up. I wish Wings of Fire was real so badly, but if you're part of this magnificent world, what part would you want to play? Let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!